From the heartland of America to every nation on earth, this is Jack Van Empe Presents The Truth in News and Commentary. Here now are doctors Jack and Rexella Van Empe. Welcome to Jack Van Impey Presents. Once again, we have a very, very exciting program for you today. Listen to this first headline. Oh, I was shocked when I read it. The Ultimate Space Journey. Whoa, so many people are signing up for some of those space journeys already. And then the second one here, scientists move, uh-oh, doomsday clock closer to midnight. We will examine that. And U.S. and Russia in danger of returning to era of nuclear rivalry. Whoa, who's going to be ahead? Are they ahead already? We'll talk about that in just a moment. But, you know, people come to Jack Van Impey, and they come to me all the time. And they say, you know, Jack, you're talking about the rapture and going up to heaven. Could we really be the generation that could go up to heaven or the generation that could see Jesus come to earth? Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Well, let's take a look, please, at this first headline. The greatest space journey. Whoa. Mark Finley says that a day is coming when we won't have to be astronauts in order to explore our own galaxy or any other. Are you kidding? We won't have to be an astronaut to go up. The ultimate space journey. Now, Jack, this is great. But he's going to be talking to us about something so far greater than that. Oh, my, Jack, the Bible explains about when God calls us home. It's the greatest journey ever. I'm going to shock you tonight, and I don't mean maybe. We are the rapture generation. Two signs had to come that have never been fulfilled, and God's Word says when these two things happen, we would be the generation to go up in the twinkling of an eye. So listen carefully. Now, what is the rapture? It's the literal visible bodily coming of Christ in the heavenlies, not yet to earth, to call us home in the twinkling of an eye. Where is it found in 1 Thessalonians 4, 16 and 18? The Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, with the trumpet of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them, with the dead, in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. Wherefore, comfort one another with these words. Now, I had a Scotch pastor from Scotland, of course, and he says, The reason that the dead rise first is because they have six feet farther to come out of the ground. <laughs> and, oh, he was quite a guy. And then McGinley was his friend, and he would preach on the rapture. And he's from Scotland, but he was a Presbyterian. But then he became a Baptist, and so he would have fun at some of his meetings. This is when the Lord comes, the Baptists are going up first, then the Nazarenes, then the Pentecostals, and right at the end will be the Presbyterians. The woman said, how dare you? I'm a Presbyterian. You said we'd be last. Go home, study your Bible, come back tomorrow night and preach the truth. He said, I came back the next night and I said, I want to apologize to this lady. The Presbyterians will be first, for the dead in Christ shall rise first. Oh, no. <laughs> she didn't like that any better. Now, I'm going to tell you something. You cannot find this message on the rapture in the four Gospels. Everyone has that wrong. He was talking about the kingdom when he comes seven years after the rapture with the people he took away at the rapture. Now, the first time you can find the rapture in the Bible is 1 Corinthians 15, 51 to 52, where it was given to Paul to declare that message. Listen, he said, I show you a mystery. Now, a mystery in the Bible is something that is mentioned for the first time. Imagine, 
we shall not all sleep be dead, but we shall all be changed in a moment, in the twinkling of an eye at the last trump. For the trumpet shall sound, and the dead shall be raised in crypto, and we the living shall be changed. For this corruptible, the dead, must put on incorruption. This mortal, the living, must have put on immortality. So when the corruptible shall have put on incorruption, and the mortal shall have put on immortality, then shall be brought to pass the saying that's written, O oh, death, where is thy sting? O oh, grave, where is thy victory? Never again will we have to be in a grave. We've gone seven years earlier, the rapture out of the grave, and now we're coming back never to see a grave again, to rule and reign with Christ on this earth for 1,000 years. Well, you know, Jack, I, I really want to ask a very, very important question here. You know, friends, the God does not do anything without a reason, a motive. Even in creation, he, he did it perfectly. Uh, he must have a reason for calling us home to heaven. Seven years before we come back with Jesus, what will we do for those seven years in heaven with Jesus before we come back to earth to rule and reign? There is what is called in the Bible the Bema Seat of Christ, and that's because he sits in that seat to judge his people whether or not they get rewards and whether or not they can reign with him in his thousand year reign upon the earth. That's in the Bible, yes. Second Corinthians 5.10, we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ that every one of us may receive the things done in his body according to that which he hath done, whether it be good or bad. Now when it's good, listen what happens in Revelation 4, verses 10 and 11. They fall before the throne of Jesus. Thou art worthy, Jesus, to receive glory, honor, and praise, for thou hast created all things, and for thy praise and power they were created. And there are five crowns that are going to be passed on. I won't get into them now. We're going to be dealing with this subject for about eight weeks, so you're going to be hearing everything about this glorious rapture. Going home in the twinkling of an eye, that's 187 trillion billions of miles and 11 one hundredths of a second, the twinkling of an eye. And we call it the greatest flight in history. Wow, it's going to be something. So there are five crowns, actually, that a Christian could receive for his service for the Lord. Is that correct, Jack? Yes. Five mm -hmm. crowns. I'm going to have a lot of questions to ask about those five crowns. What will we do with them in heaven? Wear them on top of each other or what? We we'll, we'll, we'll expect that many, Oh, no, huh? no. <laughs> no, not me. Oh, <laughs> uh, that's not for tonight. <laughs> we'll deal with that for sure. Certainly will not have that kind of pride in heaven. But uh, then there's another aspect I want to ask, Jack, before we go on with the, the headlines here. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth. After seven years with him in heaven, we come back to earth. Uh, thy kingdom come, thy will be done. What does he do that makes his will accomplished on earth, Jack? Oh, Rex, I'm going to tell you about the greatest hymn ever sung in history. They've just been caught up, like we said, called the rapture, Revelation 4.1. And in chapter 5, verses 9 to 10, here's the hymn. They sang a new song saying, Thou art worthy, O Lord, to receive glory, honor, and praise, for Thou hast created all things, and for Thy purpose they are and were created. And Thou hast redeemed us to God by Thy blood out of every kindred, tongue, people, and nation. And we shall reign on the earth with you. That's what he does when he comes back. He puts a stop to Armageddon, Revelation 11, 18, and gives his people charge over the cities of the world. It will now be the great Judea Christian New World Order ruling over the world. And Jesus is going to sit on the main throne there in Jerusalem. In Jerusalem. Isn't it wonderful how explicit? The Bible really is, there's no doubt about it, where he's going to be king of kings and lord of lords. Take a look, please, at this next picture, Jerusalem in prophecy. Well, I want to ask Jack where that's found in the Bible in a moment. And going on, city of the great king. Isn't that a beautiful picture? I love it. Now, Jack, uh, give us the Bible that uh, gives the exact place where Jesus will be king of kings and lord of lords, set up his kingdom. It's the announcement of the virgin birth, and Gabriel, the angel, appears to the Virgin Mary, and he said, Do you realize who that is? He's the Son of God, Mary. 
and his name shall be great, and he shall be called the Son of the Highest, and he shall sit upon the throne of his father David in Jerusalem, and he shall reign over Israel forever and forever. And of his kingdom, there'll be no end. Now, Rexella, I want to give what the sign is. Yes, there is a sign. Yeah. I've, I've heard of that. There's a sign that is so explicit about his coming again. Where is that, Jack? This is the morning it all happens. And, oh, I'll tell you, this will give you goose pimples on your duck bumps. And that's Matthew 24, 27. As the lightning cometh from the east and shineth, even unto the west, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. And Zechariah 14, 4 says, His feet touch the Mount of Olives in Jerusalem, and the Mount splits from east to west. Lightning blazing the heavenlies, east to west, and the ground under His feet, the Mount of Olives breaking down the center, east to west. What a glorious sign. And you know what? It's all going to happen now. Where are the generations we're about to see? Yeah, Jack, we're the generation. I, I had someone come to me not too long ago. In fact, many times I've had this happen. They say, Rexella, we can't know the day and the hour when the Lord is coming back. But friends, we can know when it's near, even at the door. The Bible says so, right, Jack? Oh, yeah. Well, first of all, we've had these guys like William Miller over 100 years ago called the Adventists. They all got together and said that Jesus would come. He didn't come. They've always been failures. Why? Because they missed the point. He said, of that day and hour knows no man. Now, nobody can, and anyone who ever gives a day is wrong. Why? Because there are 24 time zones in the world. If you say a certain hour, you'll be wrong 23 times in other parts of the world. And these 24 time zones come out as three days. When it's Thursday in Michigan, it's Wednesday in one part of the world, and Friday in the other. So nobody can know the day and the hour. It's past confusion. So he went on to say, but you can know when it's near. How? Signs. 500 of them. All 500 are here. People say, oh, but we always heard of wars, rumors of wars, famines, pestilences. You're looking at the wrong thing. Jesus said in Matthew 24, Verse 32, learn a parable of the fig tree. I'll explain all that in a minute. There are two signs, and he says, when these two happen, then all the rest will happen simultaneously with them because they've been fulfilled. And when you see all 500, that's it. We are the only generation ever to see the two signs for which we've related for one for 2011 years and the other for 2030 years. Amen. Oh, yes. You know, friends, I'm very, very excited about this program. It's so positive. It's so wonderful to know that the Lord is coming very soon. And because of this and because of the signs, we're going to be seeing a whole lot of signs that I have here, pictures about things from around the world uh, like we always do. Now, with this in mind, let's see the signs that are here that point to the return of Jesus to the earth, that point to the earth. Which generation will experience the coming of Jesus? Oh, I love that. Something had to happen. I'm going to ask Jack about this in just a moment. Before the coming of the Lord, state of Israel is born. And then, of course, that was 1948. Going on, the Six-Day War, 1967. There you see the Israeli army and those who surrender on the right. June 1967, that was a historic Six-Day War, and God fought for Israel and restored, whoa, the holy city of Jerusalem to the Jewish people. Now, I'm going to go to Jack right now. What's so important about Israel becoming a nation before Jesus returns to the earth? In other words, that Lord's Prayer could not be fulfilled until this happened. Now, why is that, Jack? Oh, folks, get this, because God only revealed it to me in the last few years. Matthew 24, 32, Jesus said, Learn a parable of the fig tree, when his branch is yet tender and bringeth forth leaves, you know that summer is nice. So likewise, when ye shall see all of the signs of Matthew 24, Mark 13, Luke 17, Luke 21, 
happening in connection with the fig tree blossoming. That's the nation that's going to be raptured, the people. You say, why? Who's the fig tree? Prove it. Joel 1, 7, there's a war, and the Jew says they have stripped my fig tree, Israel. In Hosea 9, 10, he said, I saw your fathers as the first ripened in my fig tree. No doubt about it, Israel's the fig tree. So he's, what he's saying is this, when you see Israel become a nation, and they weren't one for 2,011 years until 1948, and you see them controlling Jerusalem, and they didn't, until 1967, you have two signs there, one that took 2011 years to fulfill and the other 2030. And when they're here, that's it. Wars and rumors, wars, famines, pestilences, earthquakes in diverse places, iniquity abounding, uh, signs and space. But they had to have a Jerusalem and Israel in power. It's here. Oh. Now we're gonna really see what actually happened. Okay, let me give this, Rexella. It was Pompeius, the Roman general, who right at the beginning took the Jews from Jerusalem as captives. We had seven different empires who controlled them one after the other, seven of them. And in those places they lived for 2011 years till 1948 for the generation to see the beginning of this fulfillment. So show that, will you, All on the right, screen? Jake. You know, I'm so happy that I do have that. The seven empires that ruled in Israel. Well, Jack mentioned the Roman Empire, and that happened in 63 to 313 A.D. And then you have the Byzantine Empire, the Arab Empire, the Crusaders, the Mamluk, and the Ottoman, and the British. And now, under the British, they yes. came to power in 48. This is the sign. He said, <laughs> when you see all the signs, not just a few, all in connection with those two. Now, here's why it's so important. You're going to know that we're right. Ladies yeah. and gentlemen, this is the greatest announcement we'll ever make. Why we believe that we are the generation, because all the nations that are involved, we can show you in headlines just from the last two weeks that they're all getting ready. And when it happens, we're gone. All right, we Dick, here are the global signs and the global events. Take a look, please, at this first one. Scientists move doomsday clock closer to midnight, and they moved it up to two minutes to midnight. Atomic scientists. And then Russian warplanes send great power message. Now, you know what? They flew over the European airspace. Can you believe it? Russia tests 10 warhead ballistic missiles. Whoa. And then Russia's new military doctrine lists NATO, U.S. and as major threats. Oh, that's oh, so sad. U.S. concerned by growing expertise of China-Russia space capabilities. And U.S. and Russia in danger of returning to era of nuclear rivalry. Oh, boy. And an obsolete nuclear treaty even before Russia cheated, I know Jack's going to refer to a that deal with one, Obama. that deal with Obama. And here is China, a very powerful, powerful country now, the power of one. Of course, that is the president there. Russia and Iran signed deal to widen military Iran. cooperation. Whoa, the Bible says they're going to go together. And here is somebody. I've quoted him, Ayatollah Khamenei, so very, very often, but I want to quote him again. Khamenei calls for Muslim unity for Israel's what? Annihilation. You know, they hate the fact that Israel is such an important, important country in the Bible. Iran cleric vows to raise flag of Islam. Now take a look at that one. This was March 1st of this year on White House. Oh my, we've got to do something, friends. And the economy, Secretary Bennett over in Israel. Iran deal will go down in infamy 100 years from now. Oh, what headlines, let Jack? Me add it, yes. Rachel, Russia, Ezekiel 38 and 39. Now watch it, folks. They are going to march in the Middle East under the title of Gog, Magog, Meshach, Tubal, and Rosh. 
And of course, that's Rosia in the Greek and Russia in English. No doubt about it. Now watch it. It's the war of the latter years and the latter days. Could Russia and these nations march on Israel in the third century? No. The 10th century? No. The 17th century? No. They weren't there for 2011 years. They can march now because they've arrived and it's the war of the latter years and latter days when Russia makes the first move. Again, that's Ezekiel 38 verses 8 and 16. Now there's going to be an Arab Federation who joins Russia. That's right. And that's Daniel 1140, Isaiah 17, 1, Ezekiel 30, verses 5 to 7, and Psalm uh, chapter 83, verses 5 to 7. And what's the purpose? Let us cast Israel off from being a nation. Now here is why we're the generation. There was no Israel to invade in 48. There is now. And why do they go to war because of the division of Jerusalem. And that's Joel 3, 2. Both signs are here, 48. And then in 67, what's the battlefield of the world? Israel. Let's cast Israel off from being a nation that their name be no more remembered. That's the Arab world speaking. Psalm 83, verse 4. Now, Israel. Ezekiel 38, verses 8, 14, 16, 17, 18, 19, chapter 39, verses 2, 4, twice in 7, 9, 11, 12, 17, 22, 23, 25, 29. 18 times where the generation, it's here. China is also going to come in after Russia faces some defeat. And that's the kings of the east, the kings of the sun rising, British revised version, Revelation 16, 12. And they come right down to that place where ISIS is now battling, Iraq. Ladies and gentlemen, this is unbelievable. You see, there are three invasions in this battle called Armageddon. This is a third and final one, and they come from all nations against Jerusalem, Zechariah 14, 2. They couldn't do it till our day. There was no Jerusalem in Israeli hands until 1967. Now watch it. They get, as they're coming from the east, to get to the Middle East, they get to Jerusalem, to the Euphrates River. And boy, this is where the bloodbath begins. Loose the four demons in the great river Euphrates to slay a third part of mankind. The number of the army was 200,000, 200 million. And by these three was the third part of men slain, killed. Fire, smoke, brimstone, atomic warfare. Here's another shock. Prophecies 2,000 to 5,000 years old about atomic weaponry. Psalm 97, 3, Isaiah 66, 15, Ezekiel 20, 47, Joel chapter 2, verses 3 and 30, Zephaniah 1, 18, Malachi 4, 1, Revelation 8, 7, and Revelation 9, 18. By these three was a third part of men killed. One third of the world. We are the generation for there's now in Israel and there's a Jerusalem over which to be fought. Oh, Jack, do you realize, friends, all these global events and all the signs, they're all here. And if we ever needed to be ready for the coming of the Lord, we need to be ready right now. And that's why I want to ask you this question, very important from my heart. Are you ready? If Jesus came right now, would you be ready? Have you opened your heart to him as your Savior? That's why he came to earth, to die for you to die for me. Have you opened your heart to him? Ask him to come in, forgive you of your sins, and be your savior. Will you do it, please? It could happen at any moment. Be ready. Jack's going to pray this beautiful prayer of acceptance of Jesus. Jack. Listen carefully. Amos 4.12, prepare to meet thy God. I mean it, folks. It's closing time. Lord Jesus, savior of the world. You came years ago to set up your kingdom. You were rejected then, but it's about to happen. The signs are here. We're the generation. I'm not ready. Jesus, I want to be ready. Come into my heart. I'm asking you now to be my Savior, my personal Savior. Jesus, thank you for the bloodshed that can wash every stain of sin I've ever committed away from me. Come in, cleanse me, fill me, Jesus, now with your heart and love. Amen. Amen. Oh, did you pray that prayer? 
I trust that you did. If ever we needed to be ready, we need to be ready right now. There's my address. Please write to me. I'd love to hear from you. First Steps in a New Direction will be in the mail to you as soon as I hear from you. How good it is to walk with the Lord in these days. How good it is to have his peace in a troubled world. So please write me a note and let me know. I'll get this in the mail as soon as I hear from you. For our wonderful offer of the week, I love Dr. Dave's book, Hope in the Last Days. This is an excellent book. You must have it. It's so prophetic. It's wonderful. My husband even gave the forward on this book because he thought it was so great. And I'm also going to be uh, giving to you, celebrating the birth of the eternal God. Now, here's our announcer. He's going to tell you how you can receive this wonderful offer. Bob? To order your copy of Hope in the Last Days with a bonus celebrating the birth of the eternal God, have your credit card ready and call toll-free 24 hours a day, 1-800-JVI-7777. To order by mail in the U.S., send your donation of $24.95 to Jack Van Impey Ministries, Box 7004, Troy, Michigan, 48007. In Canada, send your donation of $24.95 to Jack Van Impey Ministries of Canada, Box 1717, Postal Station A, Windsor, Ontario, N9A6Y1. Thank you, Bob. And I want to say order right away. We'll get it in the mail as soon as we hear from you. Some of you are thinking, you know, Rick, sell if the Lord comes. Whoa, I need to do this. I need to do that. But I don't know if I can. My mother always taught me something. You can do anything you ought to do. Think about it. We'll look forward to being your home again next week. And until then, remember, God cares for you. So do we so very much. Bye-bye.